So uh, the problem is that uh, the double precision that you have with the hardware actually no longer suffices because computers now go too fast. Uh, it's very easy now to get a matrix of 1000 by 1000 in your internal memory. Very easy. But if you try to solve it, uh, most likely if you get a good answer, you'll be lucky. Uh, so uh, the solution first is to use extended uh, precision. So I'm going to show how double-double precision actually saves the day. Uh, now, uh, it costs more. And actually, uh, the solution where Ada comes in is that you can actually uh, compensate uh, for the cost overhead of your double-double arithmetic by using tasking. Um, I'm going to try to use um, the example of linear system solving. Um, the area where I come from is uh, numerical polynomial system solving where Newton's method is used uh, over and over and over again. And one of the components is actually the solution of a linear system. Uh, so in particular, it gets reduced to a linear system that is uh, triangular. Um, now, triangular matrices uh, are easy uh, to work with. If your if linear algebra was a very long time for you, uh, no worry, I will actually show you the algorithm. Um, uh, this is a very crowded slide. Uh, I'm a computational scientist, and reproducibility in science is now a big deal. Uh, can you reproduce your results? And can somebody else reproduce uh, your results? In particular, can your future self reproduce the results? Uh, so, I've been working with Ada already for 20 years, and if you want that your software should still run within the next 20 years, I would like to say that Ada is a good bet. Uh, I'm a professor, I'm teaching Python, but as you know, Python has already the, 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 the schism between 2 and 3. So, Python is a wonderful language, very nice tool, but they're already saying, look, you have to select whether you use version 2 or version 3. Uh, no matter whether there will be another version sometime later. Uh, with Ada, I had a continuous uh, development of my software. I will not go through all the problems uh, that we tried to solve. Uh, one thing about open source and mathematics, um, I would like to encourage you to take a look at Sage. Uh, Sage is a great tool, uh, bundles a lot of systems. Uh, PHC Pack, my software is one of them. Um, one of the optional ones. Uh, you can browse my code, uh, the code on GitHub. Uh, it's licensed as new GPL. What is important uh, for this talk is the uh, new ADA uh, version 2009, uh, where actually I got into uh, the multi threading. Um, so quad double precision. Um, quad double precision uh, is actually a very old idea. It comes from the time when computers did not support uh, double precision. So you could use two floats and make double precision. Uh, now we still have now a lot of chips that don't support uh, double precision. Uh, the GPUs. Uh, there are the high-end ones. The, the, the Nvidia graphics cards they do uh, support double precision. But for the, the real power that these uh, chips have, uh, it's actually not sufficient double precision. Um, so, I, for this talk, uh, the, the, the focus is not on GPU. I will not say anything more after this slide about GPUs, but it's on a multi core computers. Actually, it's very difficult now to get a single core computers. Uh, these are high end workstations that I have access to. Uh, this laptop is actually already also a supercomputer. Um, so what is our motivating example? Uh, solving a triangular system. Um, so I'm writing it down uh, first in block format. And then uh, what you actually are doing, you are inverting a matrix uh, A explicitly. So you start with the last equation, and you solve them. Uh, so you can see the algorithm. Uh, is actually very straight uh, forward. Um, so it's a nice exercise to implement this. In Newton's method, we reduce everything to uh, a 
triangles, this is a triangular linear system, whether we use Gaussian elimination or whether we use QR. Um, now, uh, how good does this work? Uh, so uh, this is an experiment where I pick a random uh, upper triangular matrix. So the matrix has no singularities, uh, very nice numbers, once uh, positive numbers, um, between negative one and one, if they're not positive, I will also align negative. But if you are a bit suspicious, they call positive numbers, that's certainly on diagonal, you never will divide to zero. You, you pick a, a, a vector that you know, and you compute the right-hand side so that you have a solution. Now, uh, this is the straightforward algorithm with a double precision. Uh, so the left column, you have the dimensions. And this was for one random input. Uh, so for dimension 4048, you have already lost all your, uh, half of your precision. Uh, it gets even worse when you get to 80 fluctuations. So each time I took random instances. So sometimes, uh, I would say that after 40, you will get lucky. Um, actually, uh, after 40, I'm also 40, and none of your organs is working normally once then. So after 40, you're also lucky. Uh, so that's the statement. Now, the double precision, it gets actually very nice. Uh, so I'm plotting here always the first component. So the entire vector is one, but the first component actually goes through all these numerical uh, computations. So the first component is most sensitive. Uh, and here you see with double double arithmetic, uh, I can actually uh, go 10 times uh, the dimension. So dimension 800 is kind of not a problem. Uh, now in the arithmetic, uh, the double double arithmetic is written very carefully. So that's a, so what I had here was a very plain a naive algorithm. So what you are doing is that uh, you have your first component here and you are subtracting uh, multiplying elements. So if you have a 1,000 by 1,000 matrix, uh, the, the first element goes to 1 million um, uh, operations. And that's rather bad. Now, numerical analysis know this. Uh, so Wolf and Wallone is the standard reference and uh, they have the notion of condition number. Uh, so uh, condition number gives you an upper bound on how the round off gets magnified. And actually a triangular system is one of the standard examples where actually they show that a non-singular matrix doesn't mean necessarily a well-conditioned matrix. Uh, so the condition number actually grows. Um, now in linear algebra, linear algebra is often very tied to partial differential equation solving where people have a grid and their matrices that come out are very well structured and nice behaved. And, but we in our uh, polynomial system solving, we cannot make any assumptions on the shape and structure of the matrix. So that's why actually we cannot go back to you and say, hey, your matrix is imposed. Don't do that. Uh, our program is uh, running a lot of these uh, linear uh, systems. Now, what I like about uh, the double-double arithmetic is that it behaves just like complex arithmetic. So you have two doubles that give you extra precision. Uh, the programming is also the two doubles, one high part, one low part. Uh, this is a slide experimentally uh, to compare uh, the overhead of the uh, complex. If you have to use fine complex groups of a polynomial, uh, you have to use software-driven arithmetic there as well. Well, it's just the same as you would use double-double here. Uh, so these are the cost overhead factors. Uh, the cost overhead factors are about uh, what you may find the number of cores in a, in a very fast uh, workstation. Uh, so the number of cores actually come out very well that you could try to compensate by uh, multi-threading for your overhead. Uh, so uh, speed up is widely known in, uh, in computer science. Quality up is less than wrong. Uh, so with speed up, you want to go faster. Uh, but uh, with quality up, you say, look, I can afford the same amount of time. Uh, how much better can I compute then? Uh, better here in our uh, case will simply mean working with more precision. 
so I will actually confuse accuracy with uh, working precision now, something that numerical analysis said you shouldn't be doing. But here for this purpose of this talk I will be doing. So we will try to keep our time constant and see if we can all compensate with multi-core uh, with um, for that cross So now I'm switching to the second part of my talk. Uh, so uh, using multitasking. Uh, so in our application, we actually run Newton's method over and over and over again. So uh, actually, we have a system where we know the solutions, and we want to go to the system where the solutions are that we want to find. So actually, we have a pleasingly parallel Parallel linear algebra is hard. Don't do it for now. Do something else and try to see if you're, you're multi-threading that you can use it. Uh, so that's what actually what we did. This is working ADA code. Uh, I think it's very naive in, after the talks of this morning. Uh, but uh, this is how I, 2009, uh, first got hooked on uh, multitasking uh, and did no longer want to look at P threads for opening key. Uh, so uh, this is a simple ADA uh, program. Uh, the workers is a generic procedure. Uh, job is what you provide uh, to the workers procedure. So that's in the specification. So that will actually launch uh, as many workers as you like. And they can all work independently. And they will execute the job based on. And uh, I was used to MPI programming. And MPI has every process has its identification. Uh, you do the same style of programming here. Every task has its identification number, and you can uh, differentiate branch on that if you want your tasks to be different. Um, uh, so if you have to do many, many jobs uh, in this job queuing thing, like we, we have to run track many paths, or even if you have to run many Newton's methods, uh, you actually have a job queue, and every uh, task actually is going to grab a next job, and you have you only have to worry about uh, when tasks grab a job, then actually they don't grab the same job, that you don't have any problems. Um, the Blue Ada compiler was a very fast solution for us to get into uh, multitasking. Another very short note that provided a lot of inspiration for the critical section was uh, semaphores, um, and that gave uh, rise to uh, an executable that actually uh, gives a very good speed up. Uh, most of my users don't actually ever know uh, that the software is written in ADA, unless they, I mean, after, after it runs successfully, they probably take a closer look. Uh, but uh, most of my users, they download the executable and then they run it. Uh, this is the PHC minus B, the black box uh, solver. You don't really care what algorithm it's using. Uh, you just run it on input, and out comes an output. No extra options required other than the black box. Now, the extra option is the minus T that allows you to specify the number of tasks or the number of cores you want to use. Uh, now, you see here, with this pleasingly parallel computation, we can actually get close to the optimal speed up. So we were using both. So now, it's still very hard. Uh, so parallel linear algebra is actually hard. Uh, so uh, this uh, slide actually tells us how linear algebra fits, fits into our scheme of things. If you want to run Newton's method, then you have the evaluation and differentiation of polynomials, and then you have the linear algebra. Um, so my code uh, was based on the Linpack. Um, so what I first did was uh, linking against them back, but then I had eight uh, uh, translations of it. Uh, the virtue there is that actually you can uh, then start changing things very quickly once you want to change the precision. So there is the x plus library, and there is double-double precision arithmetic over there. Uh, but at the time when I wanted to use it, it was not yet so available to me. Uh, dimensions need to be larger, so there is a, a, a critical platform here. So this gets close to my last slide. Um, so for dimension 80, uh, so double-double, uh, the speed-up is actually not so good yet. So for double-double, you're not yet in the sweet spot where you start to use 
or your resources, even though we can afford the final granularity of our algorithms. So for quad double, we get uh, a much better speed up. Um, but actually, um, so I'm always doubling the number of tasks. What actually would like you to focus on is the first time, so the first uh, real time, the wall clock time, and the last wall clock time. So we went from solving an 8x80 uh, linear system in one minute and eight seconds in double-double position. And then we want to have a more accurate solution. And then it costs us about half a minute, less than half a minute <coughs> more that we have to wait uh, when all the eight cores are uh, active uh, to get actually a computing in accuracy that is twice at, uh, that much. So this gives us a quality of. Uh, you can actually try to formalize this. Uh, so this is my last slide. Uh, so we have speed up where we just divide uh, wall clock times. Uh, but quality up is a little bit more subtle. Uh, so we actually are comparing if we are uh, doubling the precision, uh, what happens to the time. But in quality up, we fix the time. So actually, I have to recalibrate. Uh, so uh, you see I go from 68 seconds to 93 seconds. Uh, I have to say how many cores I would need for uh, 68 seconds. I only had eight cores on that machine where the computation was done. So actually I will need it on 11 cores. Uh, so uh, a very uh, straightforward calculation there says that op assuming optimal speed up with 11 cores, you would have gotten uh, 68. Eight uh, seconds, and then actually you evaluate uh, this uh, extrapolation formula basically, and you get to a quality up factor of 1.7, which is consistent with one. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or remarks? I'm not sure whether MATLAB has uh, built-in multi-precision. They usually, uh, they bought MUPAT recently for their multi-precision. But uh, the standard numerics in, in MATLAB is probably not for multi-precision. Okay. Thank you.